Okay, so question two from the specimen paper for Trilogy Physics. Figure three shows a ripple tank, one of my favorite bits of equipment. Okay, so basically you have a beam bouncing up and down, and it sends ripples across water, uh, and then you can investigate those ripples, get them to reflect, refract, diffract, all kinds of different phenomenon. Um, okay, so the motor makes a noise when it's turned on. Explain the differences between the properties of sound waves produced by the motor and the water waves in the ripple tank. Four marks. Right, so we're comparing explain, ex comparing and explaining the differences between the properties of sound waves and the water waves. And we have to explain the differences. Okay, so this question is essentially talking about the difference between longitudinal longitudinal and transverse waves right so longitudinal waves are where you have compressions maybe and rarefications uh, for instance if you have a spring and you give it a squish you send a ripple through that spring and that's a longitudinal wave it's where the oscillation is this way and the direction of movement of the wave is also in the same direction as the oscillation whereas with the transverse wave you might have for instance a rope you give it a flick and as you give it a flick it ripples up and down the oscillation is up and down this way but the direction of energy transfer is either this way or this way so perpendicular the oscillation is perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer so do you know which one is which? Which one is sound? Is it longitudinal or is it transverse? It is in fact longitudinal, okay? And the waves on the water, well they would be transverse. If you look at them profile, they look like this. So that's what you need to talk about. So, sound waves. Sound is a longitudinal wave, longitudinal wave, um, with Oscillations, oscillations uh, in the same direction as energy transfer, as energy, that's a G, transfer, transfer, okay? Whereas water waves are transverse transverse with oscillations at right angles angles to energy transfer transfer okay right so I think that would get you all four marks okay so question two point two uh, the sound of a wave, sorry, the period of a sound wave produced by the motor is 8.3 milliseconds. Uh, calculate the frequency of the sound waves. Right. Use the physics equation sheet. Right. A couple of things. Firstly, it says 8.3 milliseconds. You can't miss the fact that it's milliseconds. Secondly, it tells you to go to your physics equation sheet. So go to your physics equation sheet and see what it, you could possibly be using. We're looking for frequency. So it would be a good idea to try and find any formula with frequency in it. Nope, nope, nope. So that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that is, that's a possibility. That's not, 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 not. Right, so I can be pretty damn certain it's got to be this equation. <clears throat> Step two, write down the equation. So it's period is equal to one over frequency. Okay, what am I being asked for? Frequency, what am I being given? the period of the sound wave. So I've got this number, that's just the number one, and I'm asked for that, so I have to rearrange for f. Myself personally, liking algebra, I would multiply both sides by f, which gets rid of that. So I've got f times p equals one, then divide both sides by p. So divide by p, divide by p, p's on this side cancel, I get f equals one over p. So I would be substituting the numbers into that. I'd be substituting P in. If you aren't sure how to rearrange an equation like that, then you can always try and put this into a formula triangle. So in a formula triangle, 
you look at the equation you've got, you've got one thing on top, one thing underneath. So the thing on top goes there, the thing underneath, F goes there, and then the other thing will also go there. So um, the thing that's on top of the division always goes in the top part of the triangle. Then you're trying to find frequency, so you cover up frequency, you're left with 1 divided by time. And that is what I've got here, 1 divided by, I've put P, but it's P for time period, so it is T. Okay, so however you get the rearrangement done, going from there, F will be equal to 1 divided by the time period. Now the time period is 8.3, but is that it? That will get you two marks if you calculate that and put the answer. But 8.3 milliseconds. A millimeter is one thousandth of a meter. You could either write 8.3 times 10 to the minus 3, which your calculator will work out for you, or you can think to yourself, well, it's 8.3 divided by a thousand, because it's a thousandth of a millimeter, which is the same as moving this decimal place once, twice, three times, which will get you... Well, that would get you 0 0.83, 0 0.083, 0 0.0083, so this would be 0 0.0083 seconds, right? So you can either do 1 divided by 0 0.0083 seconds. Let's just check it on the calculator. 8.3 divided by 1,000. It's coming out standard form, 8.3 times 10 to the minus 3. So, uh, and then do 1 divided by that answer, and I'm getting 120.48, which safely rounds to 120 hertz. Now, it's given me the unit, so I don't need to worry about it, but that is fine, 120 hertz. Okay, next part. Explain how a student could make appropriate measures and uh, measurements and use them to determine the wavelengths of the waves in the ripple tank. Right. <laughs> Let's go back to the diagram, okay? Here are some ripples. How would you get this length, this wavelength? Well, there's various ways of doing it, okay? Probably the simplest method would be to lay a ruler next to the um, waves as close to the same height as possible. Then maybe take a photograph from above, right? And then you could count, for instance, one wave, two wave, three wave, four wave, five wave, six waves, seven, eight, nine waves. Let's say you had nine waves, okay? And that came out as nine waves were 27 centimeters long then you know that 27 divided by 9 will give you the length of one wave. Right, so that's one way of doing it. There are various different ways of working this out. They may want you to use the formula V equals F lambda, which is a possibility. And so you would need to know, you would need to measure the number of waves per second, the speed of the waves, and then you could use it to calculate the wavelength. So let's think about how we might do that. Okay. In order to get the velocity, first find velocity. How? Well, velocity you need to get by measuring the distance a wave travels and the time it takes okay so first find velocity by measuring the distance a wave travels and the time it takes how would that work well look at the diagram you could measure this distance okay you could start a stopwatch as soon as you say, so let's say this is your stopwatch. You start your stopwatch as soon as you see uh, the wave starting to uh, coming off here. You time it till it travels the predetermined distance, and you've got a time for that distance, and you've got a distance travelled. And from those two values, distance divided by time, you can get this. You can get the speed. Okay, so that's one thing you could do. You can get the speed. Then you can you can pick a point and count the number of waves 
arriving in one minute okay then calc calculate frequency right so how do you calculate frequency if you know the number of waves um, in one minute well actually I think you've got the formula sheet for that and we just used a formula for it F equals 1 over T is frequency equals 1 over time period but no that's not going to work well let's say I have 10 waves arriving in 10 seconds it's one wave per second I want how many waves per second that's what Hertz is so I get the number of waves per second calculate frequency by doing number of waves per second sorry number of waves per minute right divide it by 60 to get it divided by 60 to get it in Hertz right so then finally you take your value for sorry take the value for frequency and velocity and you and use so you're gonna rearrange v equals f lambda for lambda lambda equals well again you can put this into a formula triangle if you really want v over f times lambda covering up lambda which is what we want lambda equals v over f lambda equals v divided by f so take the value for frequency velocity and use lambda equals v over f to calculate wavelength okay I have to say I think this um, particular experiment that the AQA have put in is a bit of a dodgy one for um, it's very difficult for students to actually get experience doing this experiment because most schools will only have one ripple tank or two and they're very tricky to use but again um, as long as you're putting something sensible in here and it's you've got a sensible approach I personally would I'd take a, a photograph from above and get a and then look at the uh, freeze frames of it uh, the mark scheme doesn't give any guidance on whether that would be accepted but um, I think that enough people if enough people put it in it would be accepted let's see what the mark scheme says so the mark scheme says about longitudinal transverse that's correct 120 Hertz that's fine and finally here we've got well you can check it out for yourselves they've given similar guidance they say you need a stopwatch a meter ruler to measure distance they're saying something similar about determining the frequency so they're talking about using vehicles f lambda but there's no guidance on taking a photograph from above anyway i've made another video <coughs> on this topic so if you'd like to have a look at that one i've put a link in the description thanks for watching uh comment like subscribe